Hi all, Marta Locklear here. I wanted to come on and discuss this image that I posted on Instagram the other day. I posted it because we had a lot of questions about how we suggest metering for refined presets. Obviously, proper exposure is always the best and will give you the quickest edit. If you can get your white balance and your exposure almost dead on straight out of camera, you will almost be a one-click edit with refined, refined presets. We have built them to make them as easy to use as possible because when you're editing session after session after session or a big huge wedding, it's exhausting going in and tweaking every single file. So we want to make it so you have to do as little tweaks as possible so the better straight out camera you get, the better your edit's going to be or the faster it's going to be, I should say. With that said, there are circumstances that it's not um, as good to do a proper exposure and this is an example of that. Anything that is backlit especially because we suggest metering for the highlights versus the subject or shadow area because it will maintain your highlights in the post-processing situation. Uh, it'll keep you from blowing them out basically. And that's one thing that film has that digital doesn't is it maintains highlights a lot better. So we've kind of worked a little trick to figure that out on how to make a better edit for you. Still not film, still not perfect, but as close as possible. So I wanted to show you how I did this because so many people were like, I cannot get my dark images to look like that. So I want to show you how we did that and how easy it is. So let's go ahead and get started. For those that don't know, um, this is the before image or the image we posted. And this was the as shot and here at our house. And I believe I yeah, was at 640 ISO and I shot with my 50 millimeter 1.2 and I shot wide open um, mainly because the wider open to me the softer and the more film look it has. So let me go ahead and just get started. I used refine one on this and I'm going to go ahead and increase my exposure. What I want you to do when you're working with a backlit image is not to just keep increasing until you get your subject where you want it um, because what that what that does is it loses all of this detail in um, the background oh goodness. and yeah he looks all nice and light and beautiful but all of this is now blown out so what I want you to do is actually back up and get your window about where you want it and we're going to use a couple other tools to get that looking right so we can see a lot more of the curtain detail here I'm going to go ahead and put highlight save on I personally love green and soften. Soften takes just a tiny bit of that digital edge off and that's why I like to use it. Some people don't like it. I do. And um, we're going to go ahead and pull the highlights all the way back because we've got a very bright blown out area here. So already I've maintained a lot more of the tablecloth and the curtains and the window detail. A little blowout's not bad um, but we definitely don't want this to just be stark white over here. So I still feel like he's a little muddy the first thing I'm going to do is go ahead and let's just get this uh, temperature down. These are really the only things I tweak. Uh, let's go somewhere in here. And then what I'm going to do to lift this area is just use the shadow slider. Lifts this up and gives us a little more air, takes the mud off, and a little more breath. And you won't need to do this on images that are not backlit. Um, you can if you like a pulled shadow look or a lifted shadow look that's very film-esque. Um, but really it helps when you're trying to balance out a very dark area and a very light area to kind of use a combination of those two things. And let me go ahead and warm him up just a tiny bit. I think I need to tweak that just a hair. And um, there you go. I mean, that's what I would do. And if you wanted to still work with this a little, if it still felt a little blown out to you, um, you can just pull your whites back. And again, and just keep tweaking these until you find the right mixture. But I never go into my tone curve because we've built the tone curve to be very strong and to help you maintain these items and keep the depth of him without him looking too flat. A couple other things while I'm on here on this image, and it's kind of a personal pet peeve. And something that I think a lot of people just don't know about and something I actually didn't know about until I started shooting stock photography and um, that's chromatic aberration so and it's another little secret that will give you a difference between a digital and film image you don't see it a ton on the film images and you really only see it on digital when you're shooting wide open so what that is 
is if you zoom in, let me see if I can get it in here. Hopefully I haven't taken it off already. We have a little color noise in here too, I'll probably take care of. Let me go and do that first. Because of the um, darkness, where are you? There we go. I'm gonna go ahead and take a little of this color noise off. There we go. I don't know if you guys can see it well on the screen recording, but um, oh, so I can turn off. But in here, you can see these pink highlights, and I don't think there's any on this face. And along the edge of his white shirt, you can see this kind of turquoise green um, edge. And that is chromatic aberration. I didn't know about it until I shot stock and my images were getting um, rejected because it had this. And I'm gonna show you a quick, easy way to take care of that. I have a tool in Refines. You guys might not even know what this is. Um, it's called CA Correct, CA Correct Plus Plus. And that actually takes most of it off. Let me go back up to his pink real quick. And you can see the pink is gone. Uh, let me go ahead. All right, um, basically that's right here. So if you go to your lens, lens corrections, normally it opens like this on profile. Click on manual, and I'm gonna go ahead and turn it off real quick so you guys can see, hopefully you can see. You can see the pink highlights in his hair here. So what we're gonna do is we're just going to adjust that until they go away. And if you're, sometimes your highlights end up more orange, sometimes they end up more purple, that's what this is for. So you're kind of going to find the color that they are. I'm going to show you the blue because that one was a little more obvious. Let's get on the table. You can see this green line here and you can see it on the before here. Um, we're going to go ahead and just slide this up. And I'm going to find where that color is. It's kind of more of a turquoise. And now it's gone. So most people the average person is not going to notice this, um, but it is something that when you're looking at an image, it's kind of like a digital noise essentially to your eyes. So it just softens it and takes that vibrant edge off of the edges of your digital image, which will make it a little softer visually when you're looking at it. So it's a nice little trick to remember. So let me go ahead. I want to show you real fast how I do this because I talked through that and I want you guys to know that it doesn't take forever to do this type of edit. So I'm going to reset everything, and I'm just going to go ahead and do what I would normally do. So you can see that this does not take long. Usually between two and three is where it'll need to be if it's a strong color. And go ahead and take out that color noise just a little bit because it was a bit noisy in there. I don't mind the grain. I put added grain to it, but I honestly don't mind it. Make sure I got that. That needs to be a little stronger. And more triplets. That's it. And then when you have a bunch of images, obviously you can sync them together and go from there. Let me just show you a couple more from this set. So there's the cake. You can see it was a dark, moody day. Nice, clean edit. Um, let's see if I have any others. <laughs> he was trying to do Salt Bay. Kids with humor. Gotta love them. And there you go. So it's really easy, guys. Um, but really, the secret is combining the exposure and your shadow lift to get um, a nice, clean edit without a lot of blowout. I hope that helps you guys.